Thank you very much. Today, I want to talk about the future. My next book, Physics of the Future, is based on interviews with 300 of the world's top scientists who are inventing the future in their laboratory. We're going to talk about the next 50 to 100 years into the future. Now, of course, we will make mistakes. When the internet was first invented, some scientists made a prediction. They predicted that the internet would become a forum of high culture, high art, and high society. Well, today we know that 5% of the internet is pornography. But that's because teenage boys log on to the internet. Just wait until the grandmas and grandpas log on to the internet. Then 50% of the internet will be pornography. <laughs> so let's now take a guided tour into the future. First of all, my previous book is called Physics of the Impossible. I talk about the possibility of starships, teleportation, warp drive, time travel, faster than light travel, and this is now a TV series. You can watch me on the Discovery Channel every week. But science is the engine of prosperity. Now some people are afraid of the future. They think the future is scary. The future is going to leave without them. But just remember that science will cure disease. It will put us in contact with people. It will enhance democracy. And democracies very rarely war with each other. In the history of civilization, no two democracies have ever fought a war. And this technology is democratizing. It's based on something called Moore's Law. Moore's Law says the computer power doubles every 18 months. Your cell phone today has more computer power than most militaries in 1960. Your cell phone has more computer power than all of NASA when they put two men on the moon in 1969. So we can predict out to the next 10, 20 years. Beyond that, Moore's Law will probably collapse. The internet will be everywhere. The internet will be in our wristwatch, our glasses. Watch where we scientists are going to be putting the internet because chips will cost a penny. Chips will cost less than paper. And what do we do with paper? We throw away paper. Chips will be the largest source of waste in any city dump. And where will we put the internet? Everywhere including our glasses. These glasses are fully internet capable. Any movie, any website, and it also recognizes people's faces. How many times have you been at this conference and you bump into somebody, somebody you know, and you say, who is this person? Jim, John, Jake, I know this person. Who is he? In the future, your glasses will say, it's Jim, stupid. <laughs> Remember, you met him at last year's conference. Do you want to see his entire biography in your glasses? Or let's say you're looking for a job, and you don't know who the important people are. At a cocktail party of the future, you will know exactly who to suck up to at any cocktail party. <laughs> and in the future, you won't look like a refugee from a Hollywood science fiction movie. Children will demand this technology. Children will demand instantaneous internet in their glasses. You can put the internet directly into the retina of the eye, use the lens as a screen, or use it as a jeweler's lens. I took a film crew from the Discovery Channel to the Army, and the Army has perfected this. The Army has a device where you flick and it goes right over your eye and you see the internet of the battlefield. Friendly troops, enemy troops, airplanes, all in your contact lens. So, 
The internet will be everywhere in the future. But let's say you don't like glasses. Let's say you don't wear glasses. Then how will you access videos, information, the internet of the future? This is how you will access the internet. These are internet contact lenses. Full internet capability by blinking. And who will use this? College students taking final examinations. <laughs> you blink and all the answers come out. And if you're speaking to somebody in Chinese, or Russian, or English, subtitles, subtitles will emerge below that person. Your, eye, your contact lens will identify the person's identity, print out the biography, and give you subtitles as they speak. In the future, this is the future of your home office. You will blink and teleconference with the office. If you're an architect, you'll be able to create any kind of object you want by simply blinking. This means that you will have something called augmented reality. This means not virtual reality. This means being able to take real images and put it on top of reality. Now, where have you seen this before? You've seen augmented reality before in a movie, a Hollywood movie. This is the governor of California. <laughs> and when the governor of California looks at something, he sees a biography. It gives you details of what he is looking at. Also, if you are an architect, an artist, you will create new sculptures by looking in your contact lens, imagining sculptures in apartment buildings, recreating them right before your eyes. If you are a tourist, if you are a tourist going through Rome, what a disappointment, all the ruins of Rome gone. You will recreate the entire Roman Empire in your contact lens. The Chinese are already doing this. One of their monuments is now being put on the internet. As you walk, you see the entire garden outside Beijing in display. So in the future, screens will be in your contact lens, your wristwatch on the right, that is a wristwatch internet, and your cell phone will not only have video, audio, your cell phone will also have flexible screens. If your cell phone typewriter is too small to type, you will scroll out a bigger screen as you want from your cell phone. Flexible paper is coming very soon to the marketplace. This is the future of wallpaper. Wallpaper of the future will be pennies, because chips cost a penny in the future. The cost of scrap paper. This is your wallpaper of the future. Next time you want to redecorate your house, you simply push a button and you redecorate your entire house. That's the future of newspapers on the left, and that's the future of your wallet on the upper left. Today you have pictures of your family in your wallet. In the future, those pictures will be foldable, flexible, and they will move. Full motion picture inside your contact lens. And this is your living room of the future. This is also the future of your love life. In America, if you are a student and you cannot get a date on Friday night, we all know what you do. You get stone drunk. <laughs> In the future, you'll go to the wallpaper and say, mirror, mirror on the wall. <laughs> Who's available tonight? The wall screen knows who you like, scans all the other wall screens, and sets up a date. And then you go to the virtual reality parlor, come back and you say, mirror, mirror on the wall. My date and I want to see a movie. 
maybe Casablanca. Except, remove Humphrey Bogart's face and put my face instead. <laughs> and remove Ingrid Bergman's face and put my date's face instead. To chips will be everywhere, including toys. Toys are becoming intelligent. This is creating a problem for the English language, a contradiction in terms called smart Barbie dolls. <laughs> Another contradiction in terms is Microsoft works. That is also a contradiction in terms. Microsoft works. This is the future of your window. Your window will be intelligent, because chips only cost a penny, for God's sake. You simply look out the window, and if you don't like what you see, you change it. And you can look out any window, because glass will be intelligent. And your TV will be three-dimensional without goggles. You will not need to use lenses in the future. This is because the TV screen consists of vertical stripes very thin vertical stripes. Each stripe is a prism, a prism that shoots two images, one to the left eye and one to the right eye. So this is the future of television. This is the future of your office. When chips cost a penny, you'll simply scribble on things and then throw them away. Scrap computers. This is the future of your cubicle with flexible screens, screens that you can fold like paper. This is the future of your car. Cars will drive themselves. Look at the guy in the lower left. His hands are not on the steering wheel. I drove this car. This car has no driver. It uses GPS. BBC put me in the driver's seat. I was driving the car, and then the cameraman said, let go. <laughs> so I held my breath, closed my eyes, and let go. This is how you will drive a car in the future, okay? Because Google is putting millions of dollars into this technology. And this is how you will shop in the future. Today, if you go shopping and a dress does not fit, it's the perfect, size, perfect color, perfect shape, but it's the wrong size, no sale. In the future, your credit card has your three-dimensional measurements on it. Everything will fit in the future. Isn't the future wonderful? You will always get the bill for clothes that fit. And let's talk about medicine. As I said before, don't be afraid of the future. The future is going to be warm, friendly, and we're going to cure diseases inside your body. This is the future of aspirin. You will swallow it. It has a TV camera, a chip, and it takes pictures of your stomach as it goes down a full computer inside your body with a television screen guided by magnetism. This gives new meaning for the expression, Intel inside. <laughs> and with nanotechnology, we will zap cancer cells. Cancer cells can now be zapped by nanomolecules. This could be the end of cancer as we know it. And this is the future of your toilet. Your toilet will tell you years before there's a problem that you have cancer cells growing in your body 10 years before a tumor forms. DNA chips will be inside your bathroom, give you more computer power than a modern hospital. Sensing cancer, sensing problems inside your body. Tricorders are science fiction, but MRI machines, look, this is the smallest MRI machine. It is one foot tall, the world's smallest MRI machine. And we will create transistors out of graphene, new chemicals. And let me just say a few things. Let me speed up because I'm running out of time. Telepathy we will also have, brain-computer interfaces. We will control computers by pure thought. This person is paralyzed, and yet he can control objects with his mind, mind control. And here's J the Japanese robot Asimo, controlled by the brain. But what I really want to get into now is medicine. 
DNA is going to be put on everyone's CD-ROM. And what are we going to do with this DNA? We are going to grow new organs of the body. This is an ear. This is bone, cartilage. All of it can be grown from your own cells. This is a human bladder, the world's first human bladder grown from your own cells. We can now grow windpipes. The next organ to be grown is the liver. So for you alcoholics in the audience, there is hope. Now let's go to the video. Let's go to the year 2057.
security area, gene specialists have processed the patient's tissues. You go to the body shop and get in your water But if you happen to be a sex you can Now consider this. In the United States alone, there are 9 million miles of patients waiting for an organ And of that, 18 die every day for an organ that never comes. What we need is a human body shop. And in 50 years time, tissue engineering has changed a child today with a defective heart valve has limited options. Vast spans don't last long, and artificial valves can cause spots. Seeing that you wants to avoid these problems, and the whole thing will be the first heart valve will be exclusively for the body's own tissue. Thank you very much. So remember, the future is coming faster than you think. And it's going to be liberating, democratizing, and we will grow organs and conquer disease. Yeah.